This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Are you looking for a website or a domain? Well then check out Squarespace, but more on that later. What's up everyone? It is just me again, just Mikey boy here. Christian is still on his vacation and what I can assume is some type of sick, twisted joke. I know he's on a beach right now and he is ordering gold Cartiers for his personal collection and mailing them to my apartment so I can give them to him when he comes home. Capitalism is a funny thing. Anyways, though, today we are looking at 10 watches all under $3,000, and these are some of the best deals that I can find in watches. Some of them I don't like. They're not personally for me, but they are dirt cheap. Some of them, actually, I'll, let me rearrange this order because one of them is a watch that I am getting and I'm actually obsessed with. I think it's beautiful. I've tried one on many times. Sometimes with cheap watches, I'm really hesitant to buy them for some reason. Like, it's harder to buy a $500 watch than a $5,000 watch. Not, obviously, not monetarily, but still, I'm just like, ooh, maybe I should wait, but either way. Either way, that is the goal, and obviously, YouTube does very well with shorter type videos about solo subjects that will blow up easier, so if you want more interesting watch talk that is not YouTube in a box, which is Rolex Market, Moon Swatch, best watch under X price, head to our podcast, Theo and Harris at most places that you can find podcasts. Today, I'm talking about my watch collecting take because I've made a big change and a revelation, but also what happens to Rolex now that they are unattainable? Because I think they left a massive gap in the watch world that no other brand has picked up. And I wrote, the death of Rolex is everydayness leaves a huge gap in the watch industry that hasn't been filled yet. And I think that hurts the watch world a ton. So we're gonna look for some alternatives or at least talk about what that means and how that can be fixed and if it can be fixed and what marketing company is going to make Tissot or Longines or Oris that new company or Tudor. Well, Tudor's kind of doing that. But anyways, today, that is not the point. That is the podcast topic. Also, if you want something free like money, mascot, glasses, um, Gucci loafers, some cool jacket, raw denim jeans, I don't know, a date with Christian, subscribe and leave a comment on this video because we are doing giveaways around every month. We'll reach out, we'll reach out to you if you're the winner. Maybe we'll put you on a video, but we're just doing them to get subscribers and comments, which seems to be working okay. I'm looking at the YouTube stats and maybe it's not the best investment, but who knows? It's not my money and I'm not getting it anyway. I have 10 watches in no particular order except the last, well, maybe I should put them in, in order. I have 10 watches here in a very particular order. The last two are watches that I, one is being built for me right now, which we'll go over. And two, I'm probably going to order very soon. I, I have the watch bug always, but recently it's been back and better than ever. And I really want to have a watch collection. So some of these watches, like I said, I will not be getting, but other ones I will be getting. I will let you know. First things first, you've heard about this watch um, probably a million billion times. I saw one on the train um, when I was in Brooklyn actually recently. And that is the Tissot PRX Powermatic 80. And this specific one that I'm looking at has a black dial. It obviously, it comes in a lot of different dial colors. And this is kind of the watch that has been taking off for Tissot. And Tissot's on this list a few times because they have some amazing looking watches for a very affordable price that if this was a different time period and there wasn't this like just you know, culty following for a few certain brands. Tissot is amazing. Well, Tissot still is amazing, but if you get one, it is a great piece that you can wear forever and it will age beautifully and you can pass it down. It's just not as expensive as some other watches. So I feel like the marketing or the perception behind it is different, but either way, they make beautiful watches. So this is the PRX, 40 millimeters in diameter, 10.9 millimeters thick, which is pretty thin, not, not a strikingly thin watch, not a strikingly thick watch. It's kind of just watch thickness, if you know what I'm talking about. But it goes for $650, 100 meters water resistance, 80-hour power reserve. It's a base ETA 2824-2. It is a lug width of 12 millimeters because it comes with an integrated bracelet. But this is a fantastic oyster quartz kind of date just alternative for a very cheap price. It has, an, it has a see-through case back with a nice rotor. Nothing is obviously too crazy for $650, but... 
It's a fantastic size, it's a fantastic price, and it looks awesome, and they even have a steel and gold model of it as well, 18 karat gold. Obviously, that is $1,900 because it's a little different, but you can kind of scale that up where you want to go with it, and it's a beautiful everyday watch that is based on a rock-solid movement that you can get serviced till the end of time, made by ETA. Christian and I recently did a video about ETA and how just because they make movements for other brands and a lot of cheaper brands use them does not mean they're a bad movement. It actually means they're an excellent movement and they come at all different levels. This obviously is not a very high level, but still, it's a workhorse. It can get serviced anywhere for cheap. There are parts readily available and it goes inside of this pretty, pretty watch. So that is the first watch. Okay, next up is the Tissot Heritage 1948. You can do brown strap or you can do black strap or you can do a mesh style strap, all of them great. But on the brown strap, it is $1,400. And if this had a different brand on it or, yeah, I guess that's what we'll go with. If this had a different brand name on it, $1,400 would be a steal, and people would freak out, even with an ETA-based movement on the inside. At least that's what I think. But anyways, the backstory, as the name suggests, the Heritage 1948 draws inspiration from one of Tissot's early chronographs that hails from 1948. So this is a modern interpretation of a 1940s watch, and I, I think it's an incredible watch. It is 39.5 millimeters in diameter, so it is kind of a vintage size. It's a little bit bigger than you'd find most vintage chronographs, but still smaller than a large percentage of them. And being a chronograph, it's still relatively thin at 11.9 millimeters in thickness, which is great, which I really appreciate. It uses the ETA 2894-2 movement, which has a 42 hour power reserve and it is water resistant to 100 meters. Also, this one, unlike the PRX, has a 20 millimeter lug width, so it is a strap monster. Compare this to a Breitling Premier, which is, goes for what? Let's see. Breitling. <laughs> Breitling Premier goes for $8,600. Obviously, you can get it in that beautiful pistachio color, but compare this to a Breitling Premier, obviously some things are different, but surprisingly, not as much stuff as you'd probably want to be different is different. And this is a stunning watch. I know there is, what's interesting is I feel it too when there are some watches that you lust after that are maybe outside of your price range or maybe you just don't want to spend the money on right away and you're like, how can I get something close to that? And the tough part with that is it never really comes super close to that. You're like, okay, instead of, I really like the curved lugs, for example, on the Omega Speedmaster, so I'll get the Tissot Heritage 1948 in place of that. And that's great, but at the end of the day, you probably want a Speedmaster. So. Yes, it could be an alternative for something cheaper, but I implore you to look at this watch, for example, as its own thing, not an alternative, as Tissot's, as a piece of Tissot's history from 1948, and then it will change a little bit. Obviously, the movement is not made by Tissot, but Tissot has a lot of history behind it. They've been around forever, so respect the brand, and then I think you'll respect the watch more if you're looking for an alternative. I don't know why, I, you're probably not even thinking that. You're probably like, wow, that's a cool watch. I'll buy it. What's the next watch in the list? Also, if I'm saying Tissot wrong, so, uh, you know what? Let me try it. Okay. How to say Tissot. Tissot. Well, that, well, that's how the robot says it, so that has to work. Anyways, next up on our list is an old favorite of mine. This is a watch that I had in college for a very long time. This is a watch where if you're into watches, you have heard about it. And this is another watch where it is not an Explorer alternative. It is not a Seamaster alternative. It is not uh, what other famous watches are like. I don't know. It's not an alternative. The Alpinist from Seiko has a history unto itself. It's a 1959 sports watch reinterpretation. This, to me, could be a Grand Seiko watch. Not in, Obviously not in terms of finishing or anything like that, but I feel like the Alpinist has such a cool story behind it, and it's, you know, for explorers. It, it really is, I don't want to say it's an alternative to the Explorer, but it is the Japanese version of the Explorer, and it's amazing. For $725, I feel like you get way more value than you get with a lot of brands. 200 meters water resistance, automatic. This weird inner rotating bezel, just like um, you would get on this on a Longines diver watch. That, but in this case, it's obviously to be used as a compass. 
It's amazing. It's more water resistant than, I, I said it's not an alternative to an Explorer, but what else do I compare it to? It has a far more interesting dial, a very, very interesting and rich history behind it, and it goes for an affordable price. I'm actually selling myself on this right now. I, I used to have one of the original Green Alpinist. Hold on, Green Alpinist. I don't think they used to be 39.5, but I can't remember. They may have been. I used to wear bigger watches. Now I wear itty bitty ones. And anyways, regardless of what I'm talking about, Sapphire Crystal, Screw Down Crown, and See-Through Case Pack, uh, Seiko Caliber 6R35. Seiko is a massive beast in this industry with Seiko, with Grand Seiko, with Crador, with the Micro Artist Studio. And this is a watch where it has its own lore to it in the watch world, but also history with it. So... I would highly recommend you check it out, and I think I'm going to buy one. I need to push this further at the end of the list now because I'm definitely going to get one. It's so beautiful. Anyways, next up, Tissot. One more time. I'm going to go over this very quickly. Heritage Viso Day, Viso Day, Tissot Day Automatic with white dial on a bracelet for $675. Not too much to say about this. 40 millimeters, 11.6 millimeters diameter. 38, 38 hour power reserve, 100 meters water resistant, lug with 20 millimeters. Caliber Powermatic 80.121. Fantastic watch, but what I like the most is the Viso date at the bottom, Powermatic. That font, I feel like, makes this watch very, very classy. Does it have the same wrist presence as a vintage IWC with beautiful font on it? Not at all, but you are getting what you pay for in that regard. But either way, beautiful watch. If you got this at a graduation or something like that, Never sell it. It's a beautiful watch that functions beautifully. It looks awesome. Next up on the list is from Hamilton, actually. And not that you're looking for a Paddock Calatrava 5226G alternative, and this isn't it, if that is what you're looking for. But the dials, I feel like the texture on the dials is strikingly similar. So that's what that reminded me of right away. I think, well, we'll get into one that actually the dial is even more similar to that. But I think the textured black dial is going to be huge this year. I think everybody wants one. So anyways, Hamilton introduced this Khaki Aviation Pioneer Mechanical Chronograph. It is a little over $2,000. So it is, it's a watch. It's an expensive watch, but I think it's beautiful. It is based off of a heritage design as all watch brands are doing right now. And Hamilton kind of led the charge with that, I feel like in a certain way. So maybe a little bit more credit to them than normal, but this is a gorgeous looking watch. And what I really like about it, besides their ad, which is, I think it's really bad. I know Christian, this is normally where he would try to sell our ad services to Hamilton. I'm not even going to try and sell them to you. I'm just gonna say, we'll gladly make a video with you, collaborate, find you a Hamilton collector, show them off and doing all these cool things. But this video, first things first, they use the same theme music as the Timepiece Gentleman YouTube channel, which threw me off and threw me into another dimension right away. But I just feel like they could market it way, way better with a video. But regardless, this is a fantastic watch. A 40 millimeter case size, which is more than perfect for 99.9% .9 of people. A lug width of 22 millimeters, a 60 hour power reserve, 10 bar water resistance, and an anti-reflection coating. To me, amazing. And the fact that they're throwing it back and using a classic design is cool. The only thing that is kind of weird though is if you look at the watch front on, it, it looks like the case, the right side of the case is different than the left. Like there's a little extra fat on it or something, which most people probably wouldn't care about. But I feel like I'd stare at that a lot on my wrist and be like, oh my God, I wish, I wish I could slice that off with a butter knife or something. But either way, gorgeous watch, great price. Again, legacy watch. Although a Christian likes patina or a faux patina loom, I tend to not because I feel like it just makes the watch look a little like what you could do in 20 years with it, but the tough part is you can't with all the modern materials. So it's either for you or not for you, the faux patina. For me, I'm like in the middle. Here it looks fine, but if they offered one without it, I'd be interested to see my thoughts. Usually I can think of them myself, but not this time, I guess. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a website or domain, Squarespace is the place to go. Yep. And you actually, did need a website or domain. Uh, yeah, for, as, as an entrepreneur, and you don't need to be an entrepreneur to, to have a website, anyone, I think, needs a digital footprint, right? A place yeah. that shows what they are if they're public facing. Uh, and that's the big, big value. But yes, of course, if you're an entrepreneur and you're looking to build a website for your business, as an entrepreneur, y you find out quickly that 
you're probably only good at like one or two things, really good at one or two things. And the rest of those things that, that you're not good at, you need to stop focusing on because you're not going to get good at them. You're fighting against the tide and you're never going to win. So you either need to outsource them to individuals, which costs a lot of money, yep. which I did not have, or two, find tools that make something that is very, very difficult, very, very easy. And I'm, that's how I found Squarespace. I was trying to work with a graphic designer. I fired them, and now I'm using Squarespace. Isn't that amazing? Oh, I the did. website was horrible. Oh, my God. <laughs> but so much time. I laid everything out. I went to school for computer science. I know how to do it. I just don't have the time. Right. So much money. The website looked atrocious. atrocious. I sent a picture to Christian, and he was like, Oh my god. And I said to the guy, literally, not to sound like an ad, I was like, I'm just going to use a theme and at a different time, like, uh, I'll work on something else. But right now, I'm just going to use the theme. Oh. Theme looks perfect. And there's a wide variety of themes on Squarespace. Yeah. You can go in and find something that really suits your personality and the look and function, both. But the first thing is the look, right? It's impeccable. Beautiful design. It looks like a million dollar website, at least I think. Yes, yes. And you there's know. animations, it moves, it's fluid, the fonts, it's optimized. everything. <laughs> oh, I, coming from so much relief. I <laughs> know, I know. So whether you're an entrepreneur who needs a website or just an individual who thinks that they would benefit personally from a better, more streamlined, beautiful public presence, then I highly recommend you go over to Squarespace and use the code Theo Harris for 10% off of your order. Um, again, I, I, it's one of the best decisions I've ever made working with Squarespace. Yeah. The Tiso Gentleman Powermatic 80. We're not sponsored by Tiso, I promise. I just looked into the catalog and I was like, wow, a lot of good stuff here. This is. Okay, you, a lot of people say the Explorer alternative is Longines, which is, I feel like, definitely true. The Longines alternative, then, is the Tissot Gentleman Powermatic 80. It's basically the same style watch. It looks like an Explorer without the 369. It also looks like the Longines. So, if you want even cheaper, this is definitely a timeless design. 40 millimeters, 80 hour power reserve, 100 meters water resistance. You don't really get insane water resistance or anything like that with Longines and the Explorer. You do, but... Here you're paying $775 as opposed to thousands. So you get what you pay for. Another beautiful watch. I think they did a fantastic job with the proportions here. But I was just about to critique them, but no, I actually, I really think they do. Usually with 40 millimeter watches in this design, I find the bezel is a little too big and it looks better in the 38 or 36. This I think looks good. I think it looks fantastic. Okay, now <laughs> here's long jeans. This watch specifically, the Longines Spirit in 37 millimeters. They make it in 42 as well. I think the 42 looks a little bit better. They had more room to play around with the design, so it kind of stepped into Longines a little bit more. But what I really like about this is obviously this is an alternative for myriad watches at a higher price range. Omega Aquaterra comes to mind, and they come to mind specifically because Omega does have a smaller case size for the Aquaterra. I believe it is 34 millimeters. Let me check that right now. Okay, sorry, I stand partially right, partially wrong, which is kind of a good place to stand, I feel like. The Aquaterra, in its native size, the new ones, they have a certain look to them, and they look great. They look like previous Aquaterras, but they have fantastic dial colors. When it's scaled to 38, Omega basically was like, okay, well, this is the ladies' version of the watch, which sucks because it's not that they just made the watch smaller they made it specifically look more like a woman's watch obviously anyone can wear it but i like the original design of the aquaterra i would just like it scaled down so that to me is a, a kind of a negative in the face of omega but longines doesn't do that so we have the longines spirit here 37 millimeters 11.7 millimeters thick and it looks the same as the larger one there's a, a tiny little differences between the watch but nothing that would deter you from getting it but anyways, 19 millimeter lug width, so that's kind of a tough part. But 10 bar water resistant, which is great. Uh, sapphire crystal, anything you'd expect out of a $2,400 watch is there. I just think that, for me, is right in line. And we've worked with Longines in the past and gone to the headquarters and talked to them. So when you do that with Oris and all these other brands that we're working with, we do kind of nerd out about the brand a lot because you learn so much of the history that you're like... Why is no one talking about how great of a deal Longines is? So I'm nerding out about it a little bit more than I probably would have in the past. It is it is because we're sponsored, but not because we're getting paid to say that, only because we're actually seeing what is behind the brand, which I wish we could take you all. We're trying to do that with the videos, obviously, but 
There's amazing brands out there that you've heard of, but they just don't have the prowess of like Rolex and Omega because they don't market the same or they didn't have a watch that went to space or something like that. But they make just pieces of art in Switzerland that I wish more people would see. Anyways, moving on. Another Hamilton watch. This is the ha American classic Bolton Mechanical, which is... It's not an alternative to anything, really. I feel like it just it harkens back to vintage Hamilton. It's a cool shape. Everything's cool. It's mechanical. It's hand-wind, which is way better than if it was automatic in this case because I just think it looks awesome. I don't want to say too much about it. 80-hour powers are five bar. Fantastic pickup. These are all... If you are in a higher caliber watch collecting sphere, these are all great gifts. These are fantastic watches. And I just think this one especially is a steal. Okay, now two watches I want. One of them I am getting. I'll save that one for last. You probably know what it is. But the last one that I want to buy now with the Alpinist is a Hamilton. It's a Khaki Aviation Pilot Pioneer Mechanical. I actually photographed the original watch in the shop. This is obviously a recreation with some modifications, but it's basically untouched. There's a few things that changed on the dial. That's about it. And I think this watch, and I think one, I really love that Hamilton stuck to the original size of this watch from the 70s. This is a very small watch, but this watch actually makes me, along with the Alpinist, makes me want to go on a hike and explore something because it's not an overly expensive watch. It's mechanical. I know the Alpinist is automatic, but this is hand wind. It's small. It comes on a NATO, so it feels like it's it's made for like a trek through the woods or like a day out where you're doing something fun. It's 100 meters water resistant, 18 millimeter lugs, 80 hour power reserve. Fantastic. If you can find it not through Hamilton's website. As amazing as this watch is, I do not see where Hamilton is getting their price for it at all. You can get one on Joma Shop, you can find one used, you can find them in different places of the internet for a cheaper price. But the movement is an ETA base and the crystal is not even sapphire. If the crystal was sapphire, maybe I would just, I probably would justify it actually because I've been justifying all these other watches. Uh, actually, okay, if the movement was sapphire and this watch was 100 to $150 cheaper, I think definitely buy it straight from Hamilton or wherever you can for that price. But since it's not, get it somewhere else if you can. But this watch should not be slept on by anyone. Even if you are just, if you're a paddock collector, this is your fun whatever watch. I know most of you are very, very wealthy people and you're probably laughing at Hamilton, but still, it's a beautiful watch that I highly recommend anyone check out. For specifically the love of watchmaking and the enjoyment that you can get of you have a ton of five to twenty million dollar watches with you have one that's cheap and that you can bang around and that's beautiful from a very well-known brand okay finally finally this by some miracle and nomos being the nicest brand in the world i did a review a long time ago of the nomos club campus and i really liked the orange one i ended up going with absolute gray and i was keeping the one that nomos gave me but Nomo said, hey, that is, that's kind of our press watch. Like we wanna give you the absolute quality that we can. We want to make a watch that is then shipped to you. So it will take a few months, but we will get you that watch. And then in the video, I did say one of my long-term goals was to get a, a different club, a Neomatic or an Ahoy, which is essentially the club that is automatic with a screw down crown and 200 meters water resistance. And I said, this is just it's a category in and of itself because of Nomos's use of color on the dials They have a really cool stainless steel band. I I was obsessed with the watch I said I like the Neomatic Atlantic the blue one or the siren white, which is straight white and Nomos said hey Which one of those two do you want? So the Club Neomatic Atlantic is on its way to me. This is a more expensive watch, but the reference 741 it's brilliant. I absolutely cannot wait to get this. It is 1.5 millimeters bigger than the Club Campus. I wish it was smaller, and I also wish it was only hand wound with the screw down crown. I understand that doesn't make sense for a 200 meter water resistant watch, but still, that would have been fantastic. I'm thrilled to get this watch. I highly recommend Nomos. Nomos is one of my favorite brands of all time, just because I feel like they're very weird in some senses, but they make just rock solid watches that are unlike anybody else. This watch is 9.3 millimeters thin, 200 meters water resistance with an automatic movement, and it is 9.3 millimeters thin. 
That is crazy. And the club campus that is hand-wound is even thinner. These watches are obviously not setting records of being the thinnest watches in the world or anything like that, but it is so thin that when I got the club campus to review for the first time, I was shocked. I was like, wow, this is there is nothing on my wrist. And the brilliant thing about that is they did that obviously by making it hand wound, but even automatic is very thin, but it just feels like such an efficient package, like no most didn't waste any space. Okay, the club campus is 8.2 millimeters thin. Very, very thin with beautiful face colors, 100 meters water resistance and manual wind. The other thing that I, I probably will do by myself, I don't wanna force Nomos to send me a thousand watches, is get a stainless steel sport bracelet from Nomos with an exhibition case back on a club campus and that is an amazing watch. I love that it's I love that the 741 is automatic, but something about it being hand wound is also beautiful. I really want to get one of these watches for Taylor, my girlfriend. I think she'd love it. But anyways, that is about it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you very soon. This is a bit longer video on here than normal, but check out our podcast if you haven't already and let me know what you think. See you all soon.